We like working the land, we like producing crops, we like the challenges. I was born and raised on a dairy farm back in 1953. Agriculture has been part of my life ever since. Presently, we operate approximately 1,800 acres. Uh, No-till is a big part of our operation. This, this past year, our no-till drill covered approximately 3,000 acres between our own work and work for neighbors. In the early years, we were conventional till starting up again. I read in Successful Farming and other farm magazines how out in the Midwest people were no-tilling and I decided to reluctantly try it on a three-acre field and that was probably back, that was back in 1988. I saw success with it and over the years I continued to make improvements. We did replicated trials on sweet corn for three years in a row, the zone till and then uh, two replications of nutrient application. What we found after three years was the same results as far as yield between the three plots and the strip till with deep placed nutrient application was the best in all three years. And after that point, we said, the hell with any type of tillage. We're doing strip till, zone till, and no till. Yeah, our cooperative is farmer owned organization. Uh, we work with about over 400 farms in western New York, central New York, a little bit into Pennsylvania, uh, about a half a million acres that we consult with. Major practices that we do for soil health, I would say, first of all, is tillage. Start with that. What can I do to get less tillage on this farm? Uh, we find that tillage can promote issues or compaction. It also affects the biological life in that soil. The other thing that's really important on a farm is have something growing all year round. Have a cover crop that's even growing underneath the snow like cereal rye. Well, that way we have something growing, something to help infiltration, something to keep it from erosion, things like that. The other concept we're getting into is planting green. We would actually go and plant into a growing cover crop. What planting green systems will allow that to happen is that number one is erosion protection. When that raindrop hits that soil, it's not going to be hitting the soil, it's going to hit a crop. Two, you're creating a, a mulch. So you have a mulch that will be created out of the system that will help develop more carbon in the soil, then you have potential more organic matter. We work with a variety of other partners, agencies that we worked with. I know American Farmland Trust is one of them. They've been instrumental to help promote this educational system, plus they certainly help with the funding with these planting green trials that we're doing. This is our, going to be our third season. We started planting green, I would say, three years ago. It was a Sunday, my dad looked at the cover crops and said, I think we can plant that no-till, so we did. We had our issues with the closing. We remedied that with different closing wheels, cast iron twisters. I think you can float, quote unquote, across the field with a mat of root structure from a cover crop. Uh, the compaction is definitely down. Water seems to percolate better in the ground. Since we've moved away from conventional tillage, our soils have done very well. Our fertilities are gaining every year. We're seeing way less erosion. We're very impressed. Our yields are slowly climbing throughout the years. I think a lot of it is the organic matter and the soil health that we're trying to cultivate. The planting green definitely helps as far as erosion goes, but the whole cover cropping system has definitely helped our erosion. We do some custom planting for other farms as well. And I just think the overall, the tilth of the soil is one of the things that stands out. And the less erosion, just having that cover crop on there, erosion is huge for us. And I do think it makes how that soil works up in the spring. When we plant some of the neighbor farms that do not use cover crops, it's rather obvious when you're trying to till that ground and how do you try to get it to fine up. Well, we're going to continue to try to figure out better ways to utilize some of these planting systems so that we do less and less conventional tillage. When I went to college years ago, back in the early 70s, I took a soils class. We learned about nitrogen, phosphorus, potash, and lime. That was it. There was not one word about the biological side of the soil. More recent times, that's where it's at. You know, we tried years ago with a fertilizer program, jacking the rates up. Oh, if you put this much more fertilizer on, you'll get these more bigger yields. And we didn't see it. A lot of people didn't see it other than it cost you more. But uh, with, with this soil health improvements, the more I see, it just, it blows my mind. Don Brandt is a very unique farm operation. He's a leader. 
and he's definitely committed to soil health. He's been at it for better than 20 years on his farm. He's one of my farms like like to go at the end of the day to scout. What I mean by scouting is actually walking the fields, checking for how the crop is doing. I like walking his land because his land is great soil health. It's easier to walk on my on there for my feet and legs and ankles and all that, my hips, my back, just because the soil is like walking on a mattress because that's how healthy his soils are versus some other farms that are doing a lot more tillage and ripping and tearing. That ground is tougher to walk on. And I has a pleasure to walk his farm later in the day when I try to save my body <laughs> in that regards. I actually took a picture of the ground of the cottage cheese-like looking texture of the soil between the corn rows, and this was prior to corn harvest. That's the earthworms bring, working on the soil and the texture of it, looser soil. American Fairmont Trust, what I appreciate about the organization is their backbone is that protect farmland. That's a big thing in my mind is that how to promote that we need to protect this precious source because it's not being created, it's not being made. We need to continue to protect this farmland. How to make farmland for our production, and I think that's important how these folks are focusing, how they can prove that.